The Bible says that a third Jewish temple will be built on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and that it will cause trouble all over the world. The sacrifices in the temple will start and the Antichrist will use anger as an excuse to make people hate the state of Israel. The Antichrist will lead an invasion army to take over the third temple and turn it into a place of evil. So will the end time prophecy of the Bible be fulfilled soon? What's the update on the building of the third temple? The third temple is a name for a made-up temple that would be rebuilt in Jerusalem. It would come after Solomon's temple and the second temple, both of which were destroyed. Here is what Jeremiah says in the Bible about the third temple. Jeremiah 33, 14-18 Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good word which I have spoken concerning the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time I will cause a righteous branch of David to spring forth, and he shall execute justice and righteousness on the earth. In those days Judah shall be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell in safety, and this is the name by which she shall be called. The Lord is our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel, and the Levitical priests shall never lack a man before me to offer burnt offerings, to burn grain offerings, and to prepare sacrifices continually. This verse discusses the messianic age, which will occur when the Jewish people as a whole are redeemed and brought back to their land. When that time comes, a righteous descendant of David, who is also known as the Messiah, will reign on the throne of Jerusalem, and the temple will once again stand complete with its Levitical priesthood. Is there any indication that preparations are being made in Israel now for a third temple, assuming that this is going to become a future reality? Since 1987, when the temple movement first started making plans for the rebuilding of the third temple, efforts to see this become a reality in the 21st century have been gradually growing ever since then. Since the reconstruction of the temple is viewed as a spiritual endeavor by Orthodox Jews, they do not believe that secular Jews will have a part in the process. Despite the fact that modern Israel and a major percentage of the Jewish people across the diaspora are secular, Orthodox Jews are the ones responsible for reviving the Sanhedrin, the religious body that oversaw the halakhic matters pertaining to the temple, and they are also the ones who wish to see the temple reconstructed in the correct manner. Rebuilding the temple is significant to Orthodox Jews because in their view, it is the only thing that can lead to the redemption of the world. They believe that this can take place only when the temple has been reconstructed. Gershon Solomon is the director of the Temple Mount Faithful, an organization that has been seeking to prepare Israeli society to accept and encourage the reconstruction of the temple by demonstrations at the temple site, the fabrication of a cornerstone for the third temple, and a making of other utensils related to the temple. According to the words of Solomon, construction of the third temple is an act that must be done in order to complete the redemption of the people of the Bible in the land of the Bible. Without the Temple Mount served as the focal point of Israeli life in this land, it is impossible for me to conceive of the existence of either an Israeli state or Israelis living there. On the other hand, a significant number of devout Jews do not endorse this concept because they have internalized a diaspora mentality and a spiritualized way of thinking, both of which dismiss the possibility of a literal fulfillment of the biblical prophecies concerning a future temple. They do not object to the current political status quo on the Temple Mount, which sees Muslims in possession of the holy place. The leaders of the temple movement among the Jewish people are of the opinion that the Jewish people are not living on the spiritual level that God intended for them because the Shekinah, also known as the Divine Presence, is not present in the world. Rabbi Chaim Richman, who runs the Temple Institute, which was made all the ritual vessels needed for the temple to work and trains priests for this future work, says there is a link between the need for a new level of spiritual development and the rebuilding of the temple. The Shekinah is only brought about through the temple. Without the temple, we can never in any way accomplish what has been given to us as a people, and we will never be elevated to our spiritual stature. Only through rebuilding the temple, in the view of Orthodox Jews who are dedicated to the cause of restoring it, will it be possible to find solutions to the issues that currently plague both the world and the Jewish people. Is the building of the temple any closer to being completed today? The international community is strongly opposed to Israel's claims in Jerusalem, and this opposition is even stronger regarding Israel's contested ownership of the Temple Mount. On a more practical level, Jews are prohibited by Israeli law from praying at the site, and Muslims, such as the women in black, who keep a constant vigil on Jewish presence at the site, regularly confront those Jews who visit. 
In addition, the Islamic authorities publicly refute the notion that there was ever a temple at the location in question. In spite of this, recent events have made progress toward achieving the objectives of the temple movement and bringing about the reconstruction of the temple during our lifetimes. In response to the allegation that the location of the al Aska Mount on the Temple Mount was never home to the Jewish temple, archaeologists dug up evidence from the past several decades showing that the area where the mosque now stands, which Muslims believe Abraham constructed, was once a place where Jews performed rituals in preparation for entering the temple. The report that was filed by British archaeologist Robert Hamilton, who had documented excavations of the mosque's foundations after it was destroyed by an earthquake in 1927, provided evidence for this. Hamilton's report was filed in 2010. He uncovered the ruins of a Jewish mikveh hidden beneath the floor of the mosque. It dates back to the time of the Second Temple, when Jews purified themselves by immersing themselves in this pool prior to entering the temple precincts. These discoveries, which were buried deep within the archives department of the British mandatory government because they embarrassed Muslim officials, now provide evidence that the ancient temple stood on the site of the modern Temple Mount and that it was a place where Jews were present. Concerning the preparations for the temple service, the Sanhedrin has taken the steps necessary for resuming future temple services in the future. The planting of the biblical temple forest, which will service the agricultural requirements of the third temple, has been one of the projects that the organization has been working on. When people think about sacrifices, they think about animals and blood, but the majority of them were from plants grown around Israel. Rabbi Hillel Weiss, a spokesman for the Sanhedrin, explained that the temple served as a link between the land and the divine. When people think about sacrifices, they think about animals and blood, Rabbi Hillel Weiss said. In addition to being a member of the Sanhedrin, Rabbi Richman has been in charge of an initiative to bring the holy red heifer back to Israel. According to Numbers 19, the ashes of the red heifer must be mixed with water before they can be used to purify Jews so that they can serve in the temple. This is a prerequisite for entering the temple. Only nine red heifers were employed in the preparation of the waters that were used to purify Jews during the period of the first temple and the second temple, which span about 1,000 years. The Jewish tradition states that the Messiah will utilize the tenth one when he arrives on earth. In collaboration with an Israeli cattleman who is an expert in the field of animal husbandry science, Richman and other rabbis from the Temple Institute are given halachic oversight and counseling. He is employing the method of implanting the embryos of red Angus cattle, which are native to North America. It is not possible to bring a red heifer from another country to Israel in order to utilize it in the red heifer ceremony because the animal must have been born in the land of Israel and cannot have ever been yoked. The initiative is the product of years of research conducted at the Temple Institute that combines historical religious texts with contemporary scientific findings. Reenactments of temple ceremonies are also held by the Sanhedrin and the temple movement for the purpose of providing instruction for individuals who are members of the priestly class known as Kohanim. This training entails specialized instruction on the responsibilities of the priests, the utilization of ceremonial utensils designed specifically for use in the third temple, and practice on a recently built altar for the sacrifice of burnt offerings. Because the people of Israel are obligated to construct an altar only on the location of the first altar on Mount Moriah, also known as the Temple Mount, this altar is one of a kind because it was designed to be disassembled and quickly reassembled in its proper permanent location. It will be reassembled on the mount in the temple when the time is right, and this will make it possible to resume the sacrificial service without any further delay. Rebuilding the temple is the only way, in the eyes of Orthodox Jews who are dedicated to restoring it, to solve the difficulties that the Jewish people are currently facing, as well as the problems that are currently plaguing the globe. The Temple Institute has also recently been credited with the resuscitation of the science behind the production of biblical crimson, which is an ancient pigment. This dye was employed in the clothes of the high priest. The parashat, the enormous curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the holy place in the temple, and it was also used as an ingredient in the concoction that was blended with the ashes of the red heifer. The crimson dye was discovered by Professor Zohar Amar of Bar Ilan University. He determined that the eggs of the Tola'at Shani, which may be found in modern-day Israel, generate the dye. While the temple movement continues to make preparations for the rebuilding of the temple, 
Most members of the movement are aware that some sort of political action needs to take place in order to change the current situation in which Muslims control the mount and make it possible for Jews to access the site. It's possible that this is happening right now. In its ruling opinion on the issue of the works on the Temple Mount, the Supreme Court of Israel made the following statement in reference to the location. The reality on the Temple Mount is by no means simple. It is exceedingly sensitive and difficult all at the same time. This is one of those situations in which a judicial ruling is not a reasonable way to decide the dispute, and a decision of this kind goes beyond the boundaries of the law. In other words, a ruling of this kind violates the law. It is the political echelon, and not the court, that is responsible for giving content and meaning to the historical call that the Temple Mount is ours. In other words, this should not be a legal action, but rather a political one. Those who comprehend Daniel's prophecy of the 70th week are aware that it is a future political leader, the Antichrist of Revelation 13, who will one day make a deceptive covenant with the Jewish leaders, leading to the rebuilding of the Third Temple. Those who comprehend this prophecy are also aware that this will occur in the future. How could something like this occur? An academic book on the politics of the Temple Mount mentioned one of the possibilities as follows. Given the emphasis upon the international community's interest in the sites, under the concept of the heritage of humankind, representatives from the international community need to be included as mediators and guarantors. These are the words from the book. These would most likely originate from the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, and they would be called from regional powers like the Arab League and NATO, as well as interested states like the US, the European Union, and Russia. Any proposed legal framework will necessitate cooperation between different faiths and will demand participation from regional religious authorities. It might be complemented by religious leaders from other countries all around the world who could act as mediators. Those who seek an understanding of biblical prophecy are aware that the Antichrist will be followed by political and religious leaders, which will result in the actualization of a proposition such as this one. As we eagerly anticipate the return of our Messiah, it is thrilling to witness these developments unfold in the land of Israel in reference to the construction of a third temple. So that was all about the video. Hope you find it informative. Then do subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and press the bell icon for more updates like this.